Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And amen. So we are still in uh, the topic, wisdom from Acts chapter 9. I think by now we should be in part 3. We took part 1 last week Sunday morning, first service. Part 2 in the second service. Uh, uh, it was in part 2 I spoke on the power of prayer and fasting. Remember? And uh, then this is part 3. Now, this part, we are going to be looking at the power of relationship from this part. Acts chapter 9, uh, you know, wisdom from Acts chapter 9. We are all going to stand up to read together, verse 15 to verse 27. Verse 15 to verse 27. Please help me, technical, to balance my voice. Let's be on our feet if you are there. Media, let's have it on screen. Acts chapter 9, 15 to 27. I'll take verse 15, you take verse 16, till we get to verse 27. Are we there? I read verse 15. But the Lord said, the noise is much, but the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen vessel of mine to bear my name before Gentiles. Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. Now you read verse 16. Let's go. For I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake. Aris 17. And Ananias went his way and entered the house and laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road as you came, has sent me, that you may receive your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you read verse 18. Let's go. Immediately, there fell from his eyes something like scales, and he received his sight at once, and arose, and he was baptized. And he arose, and he was baptized. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Now you read verse 20. Let's have about 20. Let's go. Immediately, he preached in the, in the Christ, in the synagogue, that he is the son of God. Hmm. Then all who heard were amazed and said, is this not he who destroyed those who called on his name in Jerusalem and has come here for that purpose, so that he might bring them bound to the chief priest. Verse 22. Let's go. But Saul increased all the more in strength and confounded the Jews who dwelt in Damascus, proving that Jesus Christ, Jesus is the Christ. Okay? Please help them there, Osha. Now, after many days were passed, the Jews plotted to kill him. The Jews plotted to kill him. Let's read 24 together. 24 together. I said ushers. I didn't say technical. I didn't say media. I didn't say brother AY. Let's go. One, two, let's go. But their plots became known to Saul. And they washed the gates day and night to kill him. Verse 25. I read. Then the disciples took him by night and look and let him down to the wall in the large basket. Let's read 26 together and we also read 27 together. Let's go. And when Saul had come to Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and did not believe that he was a disciple. Verse 27, let's go. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road. And that he had spoken to him. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you again in Jesus' name. Let's be seated. Let's be seated. Hallelujah. Now we bless the Lord this morning. You see, this Acts chapter 9 is full of wisdom and i want every one of us to learn from it 
Last week I taught you on the power of prayer and fasting. But if you look at the scripture we've read now, now look at verse 17. They will show us verse 17. We'll see verse 19. We we'll see verse 25. And then I think there's one more verse. We'll, uh, I'll, I'll show you. As, uh, we'll see verse 27. 17, 19, 25, 27. You will see that the Bible kept record, kept showing us certain names. I read verse, 20, uh, verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered the house. Now, the assignment of Ananias was to come minister to Paul for him to receive what? His sight. One. Now, verse 19. 19. We hear another group of people. 19. Show us 19. We hear another group of people again came around Paul to minister to him. They are called the disciples. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with what? The disciples of Paul. I want to tell a Christie at Damascus. Now, those ones too that he spent time with came to strengthen him and he began to preach. Now look at another, another verse, verse 25. Verse 25. Don't forget Ananias, number one. Number two, the disciples, verse 25. Then the disciples, those same disciples, took him by night and let him down through the walls, wall in a large basket. When people wanted to kill him, it was the disciples that put him in a basket as if he was one of those goods they sold, you know. And they let him down through the walls for him to escape death. Now, which, which means without those disciples, Paul, uh, Saul, he now be, later became Paul, would have been killed. Let's take one more verse. One more verse. Now verse 27. Verse 27. You hear another name. But Barnabas took him. Now can you see his journey started with what? Ananias. Then the disciples. Now Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord. So which means, th thank you. Let's go back to my preaching now. Now if you look at this, you will see that Everything that has to do with the establishment, the healing of Paul, uh, Saul, the establishment of Saul, the announcement of Saul for ministry was done by what? Human hands. I want to show you something. Was done by human hands. Now, don't forget that his journey started with divine encounter. But God could not, God did not do without human hands. Now, I bring a conclusion before I begin to teach. And what is my conclusion? God can do all things, but God will not do all things. Register that in your mind. God can do... God can do all things, but hear me, God will not do all things. I want you to take note of that. Because a lot of us are not getting it right. A lot of us are behaving as if we don't need people. One with God is a majority. As long as I have God, as long as God is behind me, as long as God is helping me. Listen, God can do all things. I come again, but God will not do all things. Under it again, God can do without humans. But God will not do without humans. He can do without humans, but he will not do without humans. I want to try to make you see something. God can do all things. Like a slogan people used to say, what God cannot do does not exist. is true. But God will not do all things. Now, you know why I'm saying this? Listen, listen, and listen very well. Take, this, take note of this. You know why God will not do all things? You know why God will not do without man? The reason is because God himself has set in motion. I wrote here, God himself set in motion man-made system here on earth. Shall be alone saying, Jobalo ke lono, o fi aye le ki awaye ne yama jobane aye. Now let's confirm. We look at two scriptures. Psalm 115, verse 16. Psalm 115 and verse 16. God set in motion. 
the man-made system on earth. Man will always be used by God to operate on man. Let's read together. I want you to see this scripture. Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. The heaven, even the heavens are the Lord's. But the earth, he has what? Given to who? The children of men. Only on ati awon orun ti oluwa ni oni sugbon bi ta n pe ni aye oni won olorun ti fa le kini awon eniyan lowo awon me eniyan lowo that's why can god do without man yes will god do without man the answer is no can god do all things the answer is yes will god do all things the answer is no if God decides to do all things, even you will run. Can you just imagine you are in your house? You are in your house and you just see your broom stand up and begins to sweep your, your premises. Your broom begins to sweep. You won't stay. You will run. That's why you have to employ the help of what? A cleaner. There are systems that God allowed man. To establish you know one of the problems that we have in christianity let me tell you this i will speak more on that in the minister's conference see pentecostalism that is a job pentecost is started based on gifts now gifts that there was there's what we call pentecostal churches came out of orthodox churches because he got to a point the orthodox church everything was being done under what arrangement there was systems for everything so some people read bible and say ah no 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 the spirit of god should lead us that was what gave back to pentecostal church that people were coming out of the uh, uh, orthodox churches to start the pentecostal churches but it got to a point we didn't have base. Hello? We didn't have system. The problem of the Pentecostal church is system. So a lot of Pentecostal church have gone back to study the Orthodox church. That let's combine spirit and system. Am I communicating? So on earth, listen, God has made it that man should rule. That's why if you don't know how to relate Sorry to tell you this truth. You will struggle. Now, let's take one more scripture. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 23. First Chronicles chapter 12 and verse 23. First Chronicles, thank you. He said, now, these were the numbers, look at this, of the divisions that were equipped for war. And came to David, where? At Hebron. To do what? To turn over the kingdom of Saul to him. According to what? According to the word of the Lord. Which means, God said certain things concerning uh, 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 David. But, for it to be done, God had to use the hands of men. When God wants to operate on earth, you know what God will do? He will use the hands of men. You know, a lot of us Christians, we just feel that, no, no. It's just like one of our daughters, she was trusting God for the fruit of the womb many years ago. And she was praying. And while she was praying, I told her, I said, see, you don't pray with your eyes and ears closed. If you are praying as a child of God for God to help you, open your ears. There are things that God has allowed men to discover. For instance, look at technology. Do you know that as I'm preaching to you here, yesterday I was on a meeting, we are in a, in a prayer meeting with uh, my family members in Canada. And my sister said, Pastor, Pastor, uh, I was watching your birthday live and I was, I was saying, you know, we were having the birthday praise here. Where? Liberty Road. Okiado, Ibadan. Somebody was watching in Canada. Was watching live. Now, this morning, too, I've spoken and sent a message to somebody in Canada. My sister's son wanted some information from me, and I quickly sent it. I didn't have to go there. Now, imagine me praying. Ulua, 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 ah, I want to Canada. Ulua, ulua, be my bow in the share, and say, my God revealed certain laws to certain people. Hello? Am I communicating? 
and they discovered technology. The, ah! So, which means I can stay here and minister to somebody in India. The same thing. The law of science has been used to solve problems. Some people sat down. They were making research. discover. God purposely, I wrote that in my notes, God purposely left traces that people could follow, can follow. You now see them, they'll make one plus two research together. Oh, we discovered this, we discovered this. Let's combine this to get this solution. It will be wrong of you to despise the solution that God has raised man to offer. So this, my daughter was now saying, hey, pa, da, da, hey, Papa, Papa, I hey, understand. It's the hand of God. She was praying and praying and praying. Nothing happened. I'm not saying God does not answer prayers. At times, God can just decide to do the supernatural. He's God. But at times, he will tell you, go through the system. While she was busy fasting and praying, trusting God, she herself got the vision by herself. If somebody had told her, sir, she wouldn't have believed. She said, she just came to me and said, Papa, Papa, I saw one, one tall man with long hair that has feathers. That's what she believed. She believed in supernatural. The man gave me one sachet. And he said, daughter, use this and you shall be pregnant. And she woke up. Daddy, I've received my miracle. I said, you have not received your miracle. He said, what do you mean? I said, God has just given you an instruction. You need to see a doctor. There are certain things that God has given men answer to. Hello? That we just need to follow. Can God do all things? Yes. Will God do all things? No. Can God do without man? Yes. Will God do without man? No. So this, my, our daughter, uh, uh, my daughter in the Lord, uh, went to see a doctor. As she got there, the doctor was busy counseling somebody. She, the doctor listened to him, to her, and gave her a sachet of drug. Uh, exactly what she saw. And the doctor said, go and use this for the next uh, one month and let us have another appointment. After one month, the doctor was busy. The next thing she noticed is that she was feeling funny. Went back to the doctor, they ran a test, and she was pregnant. That girl of that, that pregnancy of that day is now a girl of about 16 years old now. Imagine Kushima Badua. Look at the scripture. The Bible says, This man, show us again, that first Chronicles 12 23, that David had heard the voice of God. But we are going to come. Our duty is that we will turn over the kingdom of Saul to him. Why? According to the word of the Lord. So every one of us here, hear me, hear me. Stop fighting the systems that God has used man to establish. In fact, you to look at yourself as you are standing now. Your body is full of system. We have the digestive tract. To buy Jeunsi. System, Koluma, processor. Hello? To my processor, to my soul, the vitamin, Sarama, need. Now, apart from your digestive uh, uh, tract, you have the, uh, the, the uh, what do you call the breathing one? Uh, um, respiratory tract, yes. That's where your lungs are. That when you breathe in, what do you breathe in? Oxygen. You breathe out what? Carbon dioxide. Now, once you breathe in, it will take it in, processes. The one that you does not need, you breathe it out. Now, the body is full of systems. The same way God has raised man. But most times with us is this. We don't want to understand that man is an instrument that God can use for us. I don't hear. We should kill Listen, I wrote here, we should, okay, before I go, go, get it. Our teaching today is that as believers, we should understand and cherish relationship with fellow humans. We should understand that, don't joke with it. Now, without an Ananias, Paul would have remained blind. Without the disciples, Paul would have remained ignorant. And maybe he would have, they would have been killed as we read. They were the one that put him in the basket and took him across the fence. Without a Barnabas, I'm telling you, Paul would, have, would not have been accepted by the apostles. You need to treasure relationship. 
I wrote here, we should kill every alone mentality. You know what they call a lone mentality? A lone mentality is what makes you feel that I am the only one that God is using. I'm the only one that is serving God well. I don't need anybody to be whom God wants me to be. All I just need is to just serve God. And with God that I'm serving, I will get to where I'm getting. That's what I call the alone mentality. Kill it before it kills you. It was the alone mentality that destroyed Samson and that destroyed Elijah. Go read their story. You will see that it got to a point. Elijah started to tell the Lord, Oluwa, everybody has left you. Everybody is no longer serving you. I am the only one left. He thought he was the only one because he wasn't opening his hands for relationship. Kolawa? Yes, I know you have been hurt in the past. Child of God, open your hands for relationship. Open your, I will tell you how. Open your hands for relationship. I will tell you how I go on. I know you have been hurt. So Elijah was busy saying, Lord, I'm the one. 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 I'm the only one left until he was shocked. God said to him, come to the mountain. Let's see. And when he got to the mountain, God said to him, you know what? Elijah, what are you saying? He said, Lord, I'm tired. Me, she must say, I'm the one. I'm the one. Everyone has backslidden and God smiled. The Bible says, and God said to him, Elijah, go back now. There's a man, his name is El uh, 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 Elisha of Shaphat. So he's a social and so place. Go and anoint him. You know what will happen to Elijah? Daddy will say, She man to tell me if I drop you can go to man, no man, she tatic Now, to end this, what God said, do you know that I still have 7,000? Ah, Lord, I didn't see 7,000. That's what will cause his mind. Me, only 7,000. The reason why I didn't see the 7,000 is because he was living life with closed arms. Nobody will force you to relate with you, sir. Because relationship is not by force. It's by choice. If you don't open your arms, you remain alone. So kill the alone mentality. The same thing happened to Samson. Yes, he was anointed. Yes, he was powerful. Yes, he had a, a, a great unction spiritually. But if Samson has ra had raised an army, sir, to like Samson, he used his skill and power to raise an army i'm telling you the fact he wouldn't have been captured but he was operating alone to the point i was selling delilah me me i will stand up i will shake my body i will go out i will deal with them ah i i i nico see we 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 he didn't believe in relationship the day they captured him they captured mighty something just like a small boy imagine how they plucked out his two eyes there was nobody around that could say, let's go and deliver our master. Because he had nobody he had gathered. Sir, ma, open your arms for relationship. Can God do all things? Yes. Will God do all things? No. Can God do without man? Yes. Will God do without man? No. Open your arms. Don't glory in saying, I praise the Lord. I thank God for my life. I, me, I don't know anybody. In my own environment, nobody knows me. It's a bad syndrome. Bad mentality. Tell your neighbor, ask him, did you hear what pastor is saying? Listen, I don't, that's, uh, alone mentality is, I don't need anybody to get to where I should go to. Life, listen, becomes easier when you as a person understands how to relate with fellow humans life becomes easier when you as a person know how to relate with for, uh, with fellow humans life will become easy for you if you as a person know how to relate i will teach you some things now life will become easy for you if you as a person know how to relate i come again life will become easy if you as a person know how to relate. One of our friends called us of recent and was asking, you know, my wife, uh, uh, ask your husband if he has an international ministry. And my wife responded, yes, my husband used to talk about it. He said, oh, you can even send pastors. Come open a branch. So I, we asked her, uh, where are you? She said, she's in Susan's so country, that's in Canada. That we can process for you. And we started this course. Instantly, they showed me the breakdown of the things that we are going to be doing one after the other. I was shocked. This is what so many people are looking for. 
Say relationship. I didn't hear you. You shout it aloud. If you don't know how to relate, you will just think that God is the reason why you are suffering. You will think what the pain you are going through is persecution. It's not persecution. It's ignorance. Now, my daughter was so, to go uh, do her seawest in Lagos. She, uh, she chose Lagos herself. And I encouraged her. Got a good place for her. Now, we're now thinking of accommodation. Lord, what do we do? Lord, what do we do? But while we're speaking, one of us in church, we have relationship. That's why some of you just carry your Bible after service. Can you come and anybody? Can you come and anybody? Just begin to go. I spoke with one of us. She spoke with her brother. Her brother spoke with his wife. And it was just like that. Because where she will work and where the person is living is just like 800 naira transport. And it was settled. Can you believe the day that that woman was coming to join our church? Listen. God was, you know, God knows the end from the beginning. God saw that my daughter, we need to do our sea west in Lagos. So God brought, the day she was coming, she was coming with the package. Are you hearing me? But I would have thrown the package away if I, had, if I did not relate with her well. Some of the struggling some of you have today is because of the relationships you didn't treasure yesterday. Say I hear. I, hear I didn't hear you. I hear Say I hear. I hear <laughs> so what am I saying? Kill that alone mentality. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. Life will become easier when you as a person understand how to relate with other fellow humans. Now let's look at important tips we should learn from this message. I'll tell you four and we close. Important tips we should learn from this message. Number one, God himself revealed Ananias to Paul and showed him why. Acts chapter 9, let's read 11 and 12. Write it down that way. God himself revealed Ananias to Paul and showed him why. I will tell you why I told you to write it down that way. Acts 9, 11 and 12. So the Lord said to him, arise and go to the street, call straight, and inquire at the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he is praying. Verse 12. Behold, he is praying. Behold, he is praying. Show me verse 12. Verse, 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 verse. He is praying. Behold, he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him so that he might receive him his sight. Now, which means that while Paul was busy praying, he saw a picture of a man coming. And in that picture, he saw that the name of that man is Ananias. And that man laid hand on him. And that man received him his sight. What is the message? Never joke with relationships that God revealed to you. Never joke with relationships. I've seen so many of our members said to me, Sir, I saw you in my dream praying for me. Some said, Sir, I saw you in my dream counseling me. Some said, Sir, I saw you in my dream talking to me. Some said, Sir, I saw you in my dream you gave me something. There are certain people that God will reveal to you for you to relate with. Don't joke with such relationships. So, Are you hearing me? If you are here, you have received a leading like that about anybody. It is important. I don't say, no matter what people say about such people, Such relationships are covenant relationships that you must not joke with. I come again. Such relationships are covenant relationships. Now, I'm talking about those of you that God has revealed some people to. You saw it in your dream. You saw that person in your dream. God brought that person to you. And you saw what the person came to do. Listen, if you have received such revelation, don't joke with such relationship. The devil will throw stones at that relationship, but he won't go back. The devil will show you reasons why you should disconnect from such people. He won't go back. I know what God showed me, sir. Before I married, do I married? Is it that our marriage is hundred percent smooth? No, I want no man to misunderstand me. But I won't forget what I saw. And every single time I appear before 
some I remember when I appeared before Babawa, as we got, as I got to him, we we're just talking. He was praying for me, He calls me Willie. And when he wants to call my name, Pastor Willie. Pastor Willie, oh yeah. He always said, He has not seen my wife before. I know what God showed me about her. So no matter we have misunderstanding, I to myself to me. I know what God showed me about my mentor. In fact, I know what God showed me about some members of our church. There are covenant relationships. You can fight them. Listen, only God knows why he revealed such people to you. Treasure such relationships. Never allow anything to cause division between you and such people. You know, there was this relationship between Paul and, and Barnabas. I don't know whether you have read it. But the devil scattered it. And we never heard of Barnab Bar Barnabas again. Let me show you. Acts chapter 13, 1 and 2. Let's go on a study. Acts chapter 13, 1 and 2. Acts chapter 13. Some of you, God has revealed it to you that it is because of this ministry he's blessing you. One of our men told me, he said, God told him that I will be blessing you because of my servant. You think the devil will not sit down and not want to make you see the things that will make you annoyed and leave and detach? Look at this. Let's read. Now, in the church, there was at, 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 at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Their names. Next verse. Now in the church, they are, no, no, next verse, next verse, sorry. And they ministered to the, as, sorry, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me, who? Barnabas and Saul. For the work to which I have called them, they were covenant partners. And they kept on working together until they got to Acts chapter 15, 35 to 40. Acts chapter 15. The devil will always want to attack covenant relationships. 35. Now, Paul and Barnabas also remained in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others. Move on. We'll stop at verse 40. With many others. Then after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, let us now go back and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they are doing. Let's see how they are doing. 37. 37. Now Barnabas was determined to take who? With them, John, call Mark. Now, I want to take John, call Mark, John Mark with me. Next verse. Next verse. But Paul insisted that they should not take with uh, they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in the, he, had de he left them in that country. He will dis he will disappoint us again and he had not gone with them to the work. That means he got to a country and stopped. Let's not take him along. Let's not take him along. Let's move on. Then look at this. The contention became so sharp that they parted from one another. So you can separate covenant relationship. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Yes. What happened? Verse 40. After he left. But Paul chose Silas and departed, being commanded, commended, sorry, by the brethren to the grace of God. So Barnabas took Mark. They went to Cyprus. Uh, uh, Cyprus. Paul took Silas. Do you know that from this chapter all we kept hearing was Paul and, Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas. Some relationships are covenants. God gave them to you for your lifting. Do not allow one devil to come in between you. 
ah, ah. He will never heard of Barnabas again. Read through your Bible, you'll see that this, everything about Barnabas ended from this chapter. Listen, they allowed separation and it ended like that. So I summarize this one by saying, trail covenant relationships. Our relationship called a covenant in it. Magic king rise against her. That's why I always tell young people, imagine somebody comes to you and is telling you, you are a child of God. You know that your, own, your parents are not witches. You know your, your relationship with your parents is a covenant relationship. You are a wizard. You are a wizard in you, Bana. Osho. And you are a wizard in you, Bana. Osho. And you are a wizard in you, Bana. 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 You are a wizard kyo ojo re le pe ko se le dara fun bibeli o so ki baba ati ya tu ma bo fun gbodo je olododo abi elese ko si ko fi condition si as long as they are the one that gave back and i thought to hear that even if they are witches and wizards you can send things to them from distance if they told you don't appear let them be seeing your gifts get their account numbers be sending things to them frequent even if they are witches and wizards Honor them with what you have. Some relationships are covenant relationships. One of them is your parents and you. Say, yeah. Yes, sir. Number two. Are you learning something? Yes, sir. Second tips I want second tip I want you to learn. Write it down like this. Paul's relationship with the disciples triggered his fire more. Paul's relationship with the disciples. Write it down like that. Triggered his fire more. Acts 9, 19. Show us verse 19. Acts 9, 19. His relationship with the disciples triggered his fire more. So when he had received food, he was strengthened. Then Saul spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. Verse 20. After he spent days with them, See what happened in verse 20. After spending days with the disciples, show me verse 20, show me verse 20. I don't have all the time. I have eight minutes more. Immediately, he what? He preached the Christ. He started preaching in the synagogue after he had spent days. Now, what is the message? Try your relationships that trigger your fire. Any relationship that triggers your fire, don't play with it. Which means, Bukba, I want to bambani. Tunjeki no re, itara re, ife re, fun olorun ko ma po si ma fi sere o. To mo ke ah, anytime ti ma ti wa around, around awon eni, ino mi ma po si ife mi fun olorun ma po si, ma fi ru awon relationship yen sere. They are also covenant relationships. Listen. Relationships that brings out the best in you. No matter what you do, avoid walking the journey of, of life alone. You can never be at your best alone. You can never be at your best alone. So those relationships that you know, ah, this relationship used to trigger me. Anytime I listen to this person preach, I am awakened. Treasure that relationship. The same thing used to happen to there are some preachers. When I hear them, it triggers my fire. It triggers my hunger for God. I don't joke with their voices. I treasure their voices. Let me rush through this. There is no time. Look at this quickly. Some simple reasons people don't have friends. Let me show you three. Some simple reasons people don't have friends. Look at some reasons why people don't have friends. Number one, they want to always have their way. You know there are some people like that. They always want to have their way. No, no, you can't convince me to follow you. No, listen. If you are that kind of person, you can't have friends. People that only want to have their way. No, if it's not my way, we are not going to do it. If it's not my pattern, we are not going to follow it. You can't have friends like that. In having friends, you, are, you balance yourself. because You balance yourself. 
there are some things you decide not to see. Ah, there are times now, there are times I, I'm studying scriptures, my wife will come down from, you know, come around and want to speak with me. I will pause what I'm doing. Okay, 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 I will listen. I will listen. And you know women, they want your attention. They don't just want to hear you speak. They don't want to just be saying, okay, I've had you. They want eye contact. They want to know that you are concentrating. So there are times I was okay, I'll put the Bible that I'm reading down. I can still go back to it. But you will no labor bearer, she will go back to it. So let me can rub no late, you know. The same thing in relationship. If you think you always have your way, you can't have friends, so you only want them to follow your pattern. You can't have friends, so. Number two reason why people don't have friends. Look at number two. They judge others by their own strong areas. They judge others by their own strong areas. In the area where they are strong, they use it to judge their friends. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? She doesn't know how to talk. Because you know how to talk. Stop judging people from your own area of strength. If you continue like that, you won't have friends. Nobody is 100% perfect yet. There are things in your friends you just have to overlook and endure. Say here. Number three, they do not agree that they need friendship. That's it. Third reason why people don't have friends, they don't agree that they need people. To bag back, wo ni lo a wo yon. Wo, oh, ni gba la ti dole. To bag back, wo ni da wo yon. I'm telling you. Can I tell you this truth about life? The older you grow, the more you need people. That's when you begin to realize, ah, mo de ting dag bao. There are some things you, are, you have strength to do yourself. You won't have strength to do it anymore. That's why from now, begin to accommodate people. Because even the little strength you have, as you grow, it gets to a point, it drops. And if you're going to have friends, you must be able to close your eyes to the fault of so many. But if you, if you are the person that sees everything, you can't have friends. Are you the she Hello. Let's rush through this one. Number three. Third, thing, third tip, tip that we should learn from this message. Number three. Barnabas was Paul's authenticator. Write it like that. Barnabas was Paul's authenticator. Show us verse 27 of Acts 9. Who is an authenticator? Somebody that will recommend you to others. Somebody that will show others what you are doing. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles. I wrote here, listen, and listen very well. Please, don't bite the finger that fits you. Please, don't prove to be too smart. Take note, write down these things. Don't bite the finger that fits you, one. Two, don't, don't, don't try to be too smart. You know why so many people are having problems? They want to use those that want to help them. If you are like that, be careful. Every one of us need authenticators. We need someone that we hold our hands and say, ah, this is my pastor. Pastor meaning one. Can arrange, keep pass on me while minister at the end of the end of the session party company. I want you to see. Maybe I now come there to minister. Your boss begins to say, I love this man of God, or I love this man of God, and you are the secretary to the boss. So whenever I'm coming to your office, I now say, When you say, Papa, the same secretary can close that door. That's why, register it in your spirit. Don't bite the finger that fits you. Are you hearing me? Don't bang the door on the person that is opening it for you. I don't know whether you had the, uh, the is he Oshoko, Oshoko, the, what do you call his name? Fire, your daily fire, Oshie. That's his title. Oshoko, Molly himself. Look at what he told the governor of uh, uh, River State. Before, as they finish election that time, he said, if you don't want trouble, now that you are governor, don't fight with K.O. 
that if I have followed Wiki's case instruction, I won't have the problem, problem that I, I have. That Wiki is a man that trouble is his food. Now you are governor. Make sure you don't fight Wiki. And if you, if you say you want to see everything, you will fight Wiki. If you see everything, it will affect. Is that not what is happening to him now? So I'm speaking to you as children of God. We all need authenticators to get to where we are going. But you need wisdom. I wrote here, don't prove to be too smart. Don't use them. Be sincere to them. Don't intend to drop them after you have gained access. I'm showing you how to relate with people. Authenticators. Then number four, the last one. That same verse 27b, write it down. Never for any reason speak or fight fathers. Never for any reason speak or fight fathers. Verse 27 B. Show me verse 27B. Acts 9 27B. Fast, fast, fast. But Barnabas took him and brought him to where? To the apostles. And he declared to them how he had seen the Lord on the road and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Show us the next verse. Now, it was Barnabas that took him to them. So he was with them at Jerusalem doing what? Coming in and going out. Ah, look up everybody. Go and read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Jesus, our Lord, never spoke against any of the faith fathers. Look at this one. The Pharisees came to him. They said, you are a teacher. I said, yes. Master, is it lawful for me to divorce my wife? Ah, he said, it was not so in the beginning. He that created us, created them male and female. Therefore, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. You know, he has answered their question. There he said, now say, therefore what God has done together, let no man put us on. They now came, they said, but Moses said, he gave us permission to divorce our wife. What does that mean? They wanted him to speak against who? Moses. But he just looked up and said, Moses told you to divorce your wife because your heart was hard. But it was not so from the beginning. Did he speak against Moses? He avoided Moses. That time they came for him to him. Uh -huh. The baptism of John the Baptist is it from God? The Bible says Jesus kept quiet and said he thought in himself. If he said it were from God, no, he asked them. Sorry, he asked them. Is it from God? Because they asked him a question too. Now listen. Every time they asked Jesus question that could push him against fathers, he answered them wisely. No matter how anointed you become. No matter how gifted you become. No matter how rich you become. Don't speak against those who have gone ahead. Even in their mistake, don't speak against them. Your mouth is too small to talk about their mistakes. Did you hear me? If you want to last. Forget about all this rubbish they are doing online. This one we pick Pastor Adewe, speak rubbish about Pastor Adewe. And now we pick Pastor, you know they were speaking Bishop, they were say rubbish. Most of them are speaking these things to their own doom. Learn from David. Saul wanted to kill him now, he's, 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 he's ogre. Saul was wrong. Saul had backslided. He got to that opportunity. Saul was asleep. His servant said, Ogasa, oh, there's a prophecy over you that you are going to be king. Abi, he said, yes. Let's kill this man now so that you can become king. You know what David said? He said, no one can lay his hand on the anointed and go guiltless. Only believe him. He might go to battle and not return. But me, I will not soil my hands. Are you hearing me? Don't look at your parents and say, and daddy, me, I'm not going to Ah, 
Ozi mon bia, il y a beaucoup de mal la tierce. Je vais me le coucher souvent. Go and ask people, those who live in Akubo, at those roads, only want to see Link, mon dieu, Bougo. Il va te dire, mon bia, la tierce. People who battle you don't know, don't criticize them. Oh, mon roux, go to dia, mon bati, mon. Don't speak against them. Fathers, hear me. They are those that give us access. They have cleared the battles that make life easy for us. I was teaching in the Bible school last week, Saturday, the Lebu Church Bible School. And one of the students asked me a question. He was an evangelist in a church before he joined that church, so we had, he's part of those we are training. He now told me that they are, they are pastor, that they, they contributed money to do and bill. They wanted to do and bill for the church to do, do publicity. But uh, when they came to the church, they asked their pastor. The pastor said, ah, ibati ebi de. Who am I? 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 Eh, you know to now. Kuda. For me, God was okay, Kuda. So when he asked me, and I said, you know what? You know what? I always say this. That don't come into full-time ministry. If you know that the church does not have capacity to finance your expenses. Because whether you are spiritual or not, you must spend money. And if you don't make money, and money spending is compulsory. You either steal money or borrow money. And since your pastor does not have anything doing, that ministry, and you people did not take care of your pastor, you now put money, money in the hands of somebody that has not eaten. Will you prefer that your pastor die or print and be? And I said, I'm not saying what your pastor did is right, oh, but just look at it in that way that the Error was because that pastor went into ministry full time without plan. And the person shook his head. Hmm. I said, Is that why you left the church to come and join our own? Did God say you should leave the church? If God did not tell you to leave, if that's your covenant pastor, you better go back. He said, No, sir. God actually told me to leave. I said, Clear. Don't let them set you in battle. You now say, you want, you want more. Eh, eh, wano ba mi soro si mommy mi. You want to want to bo. Mommy, mommy mi ro poli yin kwe. Eh? Ah, u ting be koto le fun la e niye o. Let's close. Let's close. I echo it. Listen, avoid it. And I say again, it is avoidable for you not to speak against Father. Oh, avoidable. Unless you choose to want to speak. Imagine for someone to say, okay, uh, Brother Gabriel, you are the one that will come and announce the, the suspension, you know, of your superior. And you to come up and say, praise the Lord. I want to you. I you. want to you. Let me summarize with it. Only what to Jagon Lower to Shesha Bossiwa Jogun. A young country Jagun for forty years. O was Shubu. He was to Shesha Bere, one man was okay. O was Bere, Sene, Soros, sent to Tin Jagun for forty years. He was in Mobiti Shubu Tieti Mabere. O Mashi Jati for forty years. Go to come out to Shubu. And it can be a very good lana. Umbu and to Tiwamba for thirty years. And no, and why? It's wisdom for the wise. The Lord will help us and strengthen us. So, what did we start with? Can God do all things? What is the answer? Yes. Will God do all things? What is the answer? No. Can God do without humans? What is the answer? Yes. Will God do without humans? No. God can do all things, but he will not do all things. Why? He has set some things in the hands of men that the system should follow. Let's be on our feet. Let's close. 
Father, we thank you for this morning again. We give you all the praise and all the glory. That the word that we have heard, Lord, sink into our spirit, transform our lives, and help us to be whom you, God, wants us to be. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. I declare as you go into this week, you are blessed.